Hurricane Ivan ravaged Grenada in September 2004. It destroyed much of the country's housing stock. The former NNP administration of Dr. Keith Mitchell sought assistance from various sources to help restore a state of normalcy to that sector. But it is not something that can be done overnight. And so, the current administration is also seeking assistance from friendly countries such as Venezuela and China. Minister for Housing, Lands and Community Development, the Honorable Aline Walker, says they're generally satisfied with what they have done based on the limited resources in a challenging year severely affected by the current economic crisis. About a month ago, we, we signed the contract with the Chinese. Mm -hmm. It's just about that. Yeah, we, China, we signed the contract with the contractor. Um, some some um, come down, I don't remember the name of the company now, from Beijing, China. Yeah. And um, something all in the new, within maybe the first month, mm -hmm. we will start constructing. 361 units, mm -hmm. 153 in so business Starting and in Subis. Subis, yeah. yes. um, 118 in um, Mangue and 28 in the first phase mm -hmm. at frequently. When, when we get into office in July, July um, last year, um, the last government already made arrangement with, with the Chinese, you know, mm -hmm. because you know after working Ivan. And then when they, they, they promised to give us, yes. they promised to give us, um, I don't remember if it was seven or more, anyhow, it's, it's more than the among that we we, we we starting with because so when we arrived, all the sites wasn't prepared. So we asked them to the sites that ready now to go ahead at the first phase. So that's one of the reasons why we started the first phase. So we waiting to do all the five sites yes, and, and cash was tight. Mm -hmm. So we asked them and they, they respond positive. And that's one of the reason why you see now that um, by next month we will start building the houses. Based on a selection process, a number of families will benefit from a $20,000 soft loan that will be payable over seven years at a 3% interest rate. Mr. Walker says another achievement for them was the collection of approximately $1.2 million that was owed by recipients of loans during the time of the previous administration. The ministry also had to put some stringent measures in place to avoid wastage. From that um, loan, which the last government, I think there was $8 million, to be lent and uh, distributed seven point, I think seven point six. When we arrived at the ministry in July, there was only about five hundred something thousand dollars remaining. So we stopped the program and we tried to, to because the program is a revolving program where we lend you the little that everybody that will lend payback, we will be able to lend somebody else, and that does bring you know that does create a problem when we lend people money and you know then and they don't pay because you see. It's a revolving fund. And as long as you throw back a little bit, you'll be able to stretch it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, next year, next year, under the same program, we ask the Ministry of Finance to make a little more money available for us. Because we say that if they give us uh, a reasonable amount, say about four or five million dollars, to put into that program, they would not give us any money again for the balance of our life because we would make sure that how we want the program, we get it to be done that way. Right. Uh, under the, uh, the land department, because we know we have the, the ministries, the housing, land and community development, we were able to, to um, assist a lot of people. We made the land available for us. Remember this project could have supposed to come over the $25 million project that was supposed to come in Monchado Park in Grenville. Mm -hmm. We were able to relocate um, some of the, the, the residents, some of them going to, to Dunfermline, the housing program, so the housing authority, which runs under our ministry. They made them some of the apartment buildings available to some of the people. Others, we we assisted them to go on their own land, and in that case, we gave them an assistance of five thousand dollars in material. You know, because after you break down, we have to go and reorganize. And then some of them, again, we made land available for, for them and also a material that is for the relocation of the people at Montreal Park. Let's look at some of the other major successes of the ministry in two thousand nine. In the area of housing, they have restructured the house repair program for improved efficiency. Material assistance was provided to repair and build homes through loans and grants, and more than 150 persons benefited. Homes were built for the needy, especially in Karku and Piti Martinique. In the area of community development, infrastructural projects were completed in all parishes. 
more than $1,960,000 was spent. The work included refurbished and renovated community centers, roads, drainage, and the provision of aggregates for community self-help projects. The emphasis in 2010 will be on more people-centered community development. In the Lands and Surveys Division, through assistance from the National Institute of Geography, Statistics and Information in Mexico, a project aimed at the computerization of the lands record is underway. This project will complement the work already done towards improving the records management systems, which were intensified during the past year. The NDC administration has always highlighted the importance of greater self-sufficiency, a point that was made by Minister Walker. For 2010, he wants to see a greater appreciation for the land, which he says will help to lower Grenada's import bill. And here he made specific reference to Grenada's recent importation of bananas from neighboring St. Vincent and the Grenadines. No, I don't have no problem, you know, with importing banana from nobody whatsoever. But I, what my problem is, that um, we should have a structure in place. If we know we, we will want banana for ripe, you know, whatever purpose, we should engage some farmers, you know, mm -hmm. and ask them to produce the banana for, 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 because we need, you know, I would like to see banana be exported again. I used to when I am a banana farmer, I'll know I go banana. So no matter about sell, but you know, I really want the food that I feel now could help us out of the trouble. Because within a year, when you plant it within a year, you could get money. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you have up to land and you ain't getting nothing from it, and then you could plant it up with banana and get 10 cents. Still better than doing that mm -hmm. than leaving it empty. Right? I mean, you know the, the effort that government made with regards to in agriculture. You know, to, we try to see if we get people to work by land, because if everybody depends on government for work, and then all the land so exposed, you know. So I don't know, we try to, trying to get some incentive for farmers to work the land. And you know, that's one of the reasons why you see a lot of money was spent, a lot of the figures was spent on this rehab program, helping people work the land. And if you, if you go around the island and see those farmers are getting assistance and make use of it, mm -hmm. eh, you, would, you, would, you would know that if all farmers take that, that opportunity, we should, very short, we should have a lot of things for export. Cocoa, you know, there is a demand for cocoa now. Just um, about two months ago, the government made a, um, was asked by Coco Board to do some assistance. Mm -hmm. They want, um, they have this company that I want to do chocolate for export. You know, they, you know kind of, I don't remember the name of the chocolate, the particular name of it, you know. We are kind of finished project. We will be exporting that instead of, instead of exporting the, 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 the cocoa in the bags. Continuing on the point of self-sufficiency, but now looking at his own constituency, Mr. Walker says the time must come when the dependence on handouts is minimized. In my area, we have um, we been the other project that started under the last government. Some of them since in '99, mm -hmm. and with little funds that we are, we still trying to to okay. complete them. We did one already. The the commission that mm -hmm. we opened that about two months ago, I think. Yeah, we doing some work now on the one in um, Baltaza, which we hoping to open in, in January. Mm -hmm. We did some work um, on a, a bridge in, um, in Bylands. We, we also have a, a, um, a concrete road that we, we, we want to be we all in in here. Mm -hmm. Because we promised to do it before, but you know, the cash flow situation. Okay. Yeah, but you know, in all them villages, because they make their request. And then you know, we, I go out on Thursday nights, and we did different village. They say they live on Sun, and I tell them we have a lot of patients. You know, so the next round now is the delivery. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, you know, we take the request. Yeah, and um, in um, Adelphi we, we have something like the cemetery that we want to do. Yeah, apart from what we're doing now, you know what I mean, there are a lot of unfinished projects, bridges, and well, you know, name it. Mm 